After talking about the processing and the automation basics, we are moving toward the wireless communication for the laboratory automation. Wireless communication, as I said earlier, is really important for the automation of the laboratory units. And let's move on. Wired communication is there, wireless communication in, is there. There are some pros and cons on each of them and we will be covering this and this could help you to analyze what uh, technology that you're going to use for your application. So as I said earlier, wired communication is based on wires. That means we have a limited operation and uh, we can achieve a higher data rate because of the wires. But this higher data rate which we are achieving is like 10 Gbps and we are able to achieve it with Wi-Fi 6 almost. It's 9.6 9 Gbps with Wi-Fi 6 that we can achieve and we wouldn't be needing some wires there. And that also with Wi-Fi, we will have a higher range. We can create uh, uh, meshes of the uh, devices. And uh, wired networks, they are more secure, but with Wi-Fi 6, we have WPA3 certification. That means we have uh, higher security there as well. And then uh, power consumption is another important parameter when we are looking toward the communication between different devices. Uh, with, uh, it has been there in the wireless communications that uh, the power consumption is super high, but with Wi-Fi 6 enabled, uh, a significant improvement into the system. That means we will have a lower power consumption. Uh, not that much comparable to the wired networks, but it would be better. Then cost effectiveness, uh, of course, the cost of installation of wired network is really high while the cost of installing a wire, wireless network is super low. So in this perspective, wireless network could be a significant um, improvement to your system, but it depends completely upon your application that what you are trying to achieve. So if wired connectivity is the best option for you, then uh, you have to look these things that your system would not be scalable. So if uh, it depends upon the application that we you are intending. Uh, while diving deep into the wireless connectivity, as I said earlier that the wireless connectivity makes the system scalable. That means you have, uh, for example, a number of system or sensor nodes that are different distance and they are communicating with the, uh, a central unit and sending some uh, commands to actuators or targets and communicating via internet. Uh, that means we have a like wireless sensor network and we can have a number of them and they could communicate with each other over remote areas and at higher distance. We can achieve uh, a low cost solution for our laboratory. We can make our laboratory uh, faster and robust in operation, we can have real-time monitoring in this case, and we can achieve a, a cost-effective solution for a laboratory. We, uh, when we are talking about wireless communication between the devices, we can have a decentralized control as well, and we can have access-based control as well. We could have also centralized control, but decentralized control could help in this increasing number, with increasing number of devices, the uh, distributed control could help us more uh, as compared to centralized control. Uh, so we look toward, towards the communication side. We look, sub toward the, look toward the control side and we look toward the computation side. We have information from the physical devices. We control it somehow and through a wireless communication network or uh, through some wireless communication protocol and we compute something that helps the controller to achieve its specific goal. And that makes the system com uh, consist of communication, control and computation. And these th three things make uh, what a cyber physical system. So when we are having a wired connectivity, it's just a cyber physical system. But when we talk about wireless connectivity, we say it wireless cyber physical system and wireless cyber physical system are nothing but a system that could actually ach help a physical system to perform better by uh, connecting to cyber domain and the communication domain. 
So, we have a physical world we con which consists of sensors and actuator, then we have a computational world which consists of processing and then we have a, a communication domain which comes with the connectivity between different devices. Wireless cyber physical system as I said earlier has sensing, actuation, computation and network. So, whatever we have uh, in uh, our laboratory for example, we have running a process then we have a number of sensors which are actually seeing uh, what are the output of this process. And this process uh, sensing unit or sensing unit's information is actually passing through a network to uh, actuator and also to computation. So, if we are just putting it to uh, whatever the response is through a computation system, so the computation system is uh, calculating whatever should be the response of the actuator and then transferring the information to actuator to perform basically the way uh, it is supposed to to achieve a objective. Uh, then this whole uh, system that I am showing here is actually a wireless cyber physical system but in perspective of laboratory. So, uh, the wireless communication uh, plays a really important role. Uh, when you are talking about laboratories that could be scalable. So, uh, you have to make sure that the wireless communication protocol that you are using uh, has a specific range or is able to achieve a higher data rate, the data rate that you are intending for your application, it is secure, then it has lower power consumption. And we have a number of uh, wireless communication protocols in the network, uh, in the in the world around us sorry and uh, they are scalable as well they are resource efficient and uh, interoperability is the most important thing when you are talking about the wireless communication so uh, this should be make you have to make sure that you take the right uh, network technology or wireless technology to make sure that your application is interoperable or interoperable and uh, we are, uh, if you see around your, um, uh, in, um, you can see that there are a number of short range and long range mature technologies that are already present. And I would uh, be preferring that you choose something which is already mature rather than choosing something which you have to build or you, uh, people are still doing a research about because this could uh, be really problematic if the, if you discovered that okay th this technology there is this problem. So, uh, do your research and look at the short range and long range technologies which are already present and depending upon the technologies that you that are present with the uh, specific specification that I mentioned the range, power, consumption, data rate, security and of course network topology then you can uh, decide whatever is best for your application. Uh, looking at the short range technology, we have Wi-Fi, RFID, Bluetooth, Zigbee. Wi-Fi, I think everyone knows about it and RFID NFC, of course, it's really famous. We are using it in our secure payments every day and uh, Bluetooth is also in our phones as well. Uh, at start, the power consumption of Bluetooth was higher and of course, it was not that much secure but with the uh, improvements in the Wi-Fi or and sorry in the Bluetooth we are uh, achieving a good data rate here we are achieving a good range here as well and um, uh, there is this Zigbee so as compared to Bluetooth Zigbee has a higher range but then this higher range come at the cost of the data rate that we are, could achieve with Zigbee so the data rate that we can achieve with Zigbee is lower but the range is higher and Zigbee is secured as well and of course we can have different topologies of it and uh, Zigbee could provide us more network topologies than uh, uh, Bluetooth. Then in the long range technologies we have LoRaWAN, Sigfox, NBIoT. NBIoT is secure, reliable and uh, it has a deep penetration but it's still a new technology and a lot of research is being performed over it. 
and uh, if uh, the cost of implementing long range technologies is higher as compared to short range technologies because you need to uh, install an, uh, a number of equipments there and uh, the data rate with long range technology is also lower as compared to short range technologies and it depends uh, how much range you require and how much data rate that you want to achieve how scalable is your operation or your laboratory is uh, or how far you want to reach with the same technology so these are the um, one that i have found more mature than the other technologies talking about the wi-fi in uh, different perspective when we started with Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi was, uh, Wi-Fi 1 was introduced in 1999 and it had pretty much lower data rate and over the years it improved, we achieved like uh, 54 Mbps and now with Wi-Fi 6 in 2019 we are able to achieve uh, uh, around 9 point, it's expected that it would hit 9.6 Gbps of data rate and it's highly efficient, its capacity is higher. So uh, the hopes are over Wi-Fi 6 because it is claimed to be secure and might, might be this could be a point where Wi-Fi could replace uh, wire technology. Mm -hmm.